and the other tones it should ignore. So, this toy is using a Helmhertz resonator and a vibration switch to control whether the Cobra is going to come up and out of the basket or go back inside. This is one of the most compact versions I've seen of the Helmhertz resonator switch being used and um, one of the more complicated because it also has end stop switches. Uh, when the Cobra's all the way up, there's an end stop switch that'll turn the motor off at that point. When the Cobra's all the way back in, there's an end stop switch that turns it off at that point, too. Very complicated. Also not very reliable. I mean, it's a toy. It's not supposed to work all the time. And that's a good thing, because it won't. Let me shut it off here. So your Helmhertz resonator is just plastic tube here, which is opened on the bottom. And across the top up in there, there is just a metal disc, which is held in place by this plastic cap. And sitting on top of the metal disc, maybe we can get it to where the camera can kind of kind of see it. See that little thing up in there? That's just a contact. Here's the uh, that lever looking thing is the back side of it. Hear that? It's just a contact that gravity is pulling down onto this metal disc. So you have a contact there and a contact there. And when those two contacts are touching, which is when there's no sound, this relay is turned on. So when this is turned on and nothing's happening, you're still running battery voltage to this sensitive relay here. This is a single pole double throw relay. And it's used for reversing the direction of the motor. When sound when the proper sound is in this Helmhertz resonator, it kind of rejects everything else. When you hit the right frequency, then that metal plate on the top stops, starts vibrating. When it vibrates, that's interrupting the power to this relay. This is a DC relay that likes to see a nice clean DC pulse. As soon as you start feeding it anything with an alternating uh, circuit to it, an AC type signal, the relay will open up. When it opens up, that'll reverse the direction of the motor. So, no sound. The motor is being told to wind all the way down and in fact in order to get a forward and reverse off a single pull double throw you have to use a center tap battery pack. So they have three batteries. This one battery over here is being used just to retract the Cobra. These two batteries, three volts, are being used to extend the Cobra quicker and run the relay. The main mechanical problems this was sent to me for was that there were three plastic gears inside this device. This brass gear is a new one which I have soldered on the end of that shaft. That used to be a plastic gear which was cracked and missing. That brass gear drives that large gear that you see there which turns this large drum and this large drum is what extends the Cobra with a flexible metal shaft. Now these little humps here, and there's two of them, there's one down there, is already pushing against one of the two momentary switches. The one that tells it when it's all the way down. So when it's all the way down it can open the circuit so power isn't continually being pumped into that motor and causing damage. When this one goes around the other way that's when the Cobra's all the way up and it turns the power off to the motor. So you've got two end stop switches, you've got the big drum that moves the Cobra, the large gear that drives the Cobra is driven by the brass gear. This gear drives the, uh, the brass gear, but it's driven by a white plastic gear, which may you can kind of see it back in there. That pl white plastic gear back in there was cracked and not working. So I had to completely take this uh, whole gearbox apart in order to put the new gear on that shaft. In order to take this uh, gearbox apart, this main shaft that drives this Cobra and the large gear comes out over here was crimped. Had to remove the crimps so I could tear everything apart. You know, of course, take the relay off and everything else. Replace that one. The uh, third plastic gear, which was still okay, was the one that's on the uh, the motor itself, which is back here. Okay. 
So, other toys that uh, use a Helmhertz resonator for a whistle control mostly stain from the 1950s with the American-made Golden Sonic ship, which was the first. And then after that there were uh, Sonicon rocket, there was a Sonar Space Patrol tin toy made in Japan that was whistle controlled. And um, I have done two or three different uh, videos on how to make a Helmhertz resonator. Since there are no transistors, there's no twos, it's all electromechanical. Um, one of the ones I did was just build a Helmholtz, I'll, I'll put links to this, Helmholtz resonator. And I also did a, um, well, what did I call it? I called it Sonicon Robot. It's 3D printed, and I used a Helmhertz resonator and a whistle. You can 3D print all the parts. Then I also did a Hexabot, a six-legged robot that walks, that uses uh, all, uh, an Arduino uh, modern IC tone detector, but I put the tone detector inside the Helmhertz resonator to give it even more definition. So... Those are all ones you can build. I'll put links to some of those. Uh, as far as the Golden Sonic, which was the first that used it, I think if you just type in Golden Sonic um, in YouTube, you can find links to other people demonstrating their Golden Sonic. And uh, not this this will mean anything to anybody, but if any of you kind of want to know what's going on there electronics-wise, just do a freeze frame and. There's a wiring diagram of what's going on in here. But, being that it's a toy, being that it's uh, gravity fed and there's contact points and things that can corrode and, and quit working, it's not going to work all the time. It's kind of a hit and miss thing. I mean, it is a toy and they, they were kind of planning on that. So you turned it on. Let's just see if it responds, if we're lucky. We were lucky. As long as you blow the whistle, that would stay up. As soon as you quit blowing the whistle, it would go down. You can see other tones. That tone did affect it. We were lucky. Let's try the third tone. Nope. That tone's easier for me to hit. Let's try no fingers on the whistle. So it's even higher yet. But I knew by looking at the size of this plastic tube, it was going to be a very high note. And I ended up using my keyboard, which I set on a flute setting to give the closest thing to a, a sine wave, so there'd be less harmonics in it. And went up and down the keyboard, and I found that the center frequency of this Helmhertz, kind of depending on how you put the plastic cap on on the top, was about uh, a high F sharp. And uh, right now it looks like it might be a little bit lower than that because earlier it wouldn't respond to uh, having both these holes plugged. It would only respond to having the one. So, and I've had the cap on and off since then. So how, how tightly this plastic cap, which is mainly there to protect uh, the top of the dome and, and that little switch that rests on there, it also compresses that metal ring that I said is sitting on the top of this clear plastic tube. So how tightly all that fits together is going to have a lot to do with you know, shut that off. Going to have a lot to do with how uh, the tone of this chamber. Uh, the more that metal plate is sealed then I would think the chamber probably would have a higher frequency but maybe it's lower. At any rate it will affect it so there you have it. This is the most compact version of the Helmhertz Resonator uh, vibration switch whistle toy that I have seen. I guess I'll do a follow-up video to this once I put the uh, the basket and everything back together and we'll see if the thing still still works when it's all back together.